On the mid-north coast of New South Wales, another quality crop of tomatoes is ripening on the vine. But instead of taking the product to market, the family company behind Ricardo's Tomatoes is working to bring the people to the farm. The Sark brothers, who set up the operation 10 years ago, believe they would be out of business today if they hadn't sidestepped the usual wholesalers. Landline's Ginny Stein filmed this report. On the New South Wales mid-north coast, farm owner Anthony Sark and his manager Rob Sarfi are hard at work. Morning Rob and I are both on deck for packing, so uh, if we all get into it we can get it done by nine o'clock and then that's done for the day. And it's a good opportunity for Rob and I to stand still and um, meet. This is our meeting. This tomato farm is proof that from little things, big things grow. What began as a backyard experiment, this is now a high-tech tomato farm and a booming family business. We were growing some tomatoes just for a little bit of fun and we had a little bit of excess and just to get up a little bit of beer money, we put an honesty box at the front gate and a two-line ad in the local paper. And um, what we found was once the word got around the district, people were willing to drive if they knew they could get good tomatoes. So we pretty quickly sold out each day. From the outset, Anthony Sark believed the only way for his farm to thrive and survive was to turn marketing of its product on its head. When we took that giant leap into, into our uh, bigger high-tech greenhouses, um, we pretty quickly realised that, that if we relied on the, on the Flemingtons of the world, we would pretty soon go out backwards. So we needed to investigate other methods of um, just to getting a better return for our produce. And that meant selling their produce on site. It's fine, I'm just filming tomatoes. <laughs> well, a good place to do it. <laughs> the bottom line is we're bringing the customers to the farm not sending the farm to the customer. And that's the whole principle of what we're trying to do. And everybody wins that way. The customers win because they get a fresher product, they get a riper product, and as we all know with tomatoes, vine ripen gives you the flavour, and the farmer wins because um, we've eliminated all those downstream costs. This crop was planted about four months ago. But if you have a look at this plant here, the roots of it are here, but if I give that a little shake, can you see where the head of that plant is? All the way down there. We try not to let the daily farm tour the was on. one of the first uh, steps. The Today, there's some retired tomato producers keen to see the farm's hydroponic systems at work. So if we follow that truss of tomatoes, they go one week down and across. Two weeks, three weeks, pick. We know what good tomatoes are because we used to grow them commercially. So how do these raise? Oh, excellent. Yes. yes. To look at the fruit, they're immaculate. Growing them in the field like we used to, they tasted beautiful, but you could never get 100% perfect colour and shape and skin. And this week, Without then? excessive spraying of insecticides and all the horrible stuff. Ricardo's Tomatoes is a well-recognised brand in this part of the world with a very loyal following. Building that brand has taken many years of hard work, helped along more recently by the push to buy locally grown food. In the early days we never thought it was possible to brand a commodity like tomato. I think with the fact that, that our population around here is um, all baby boomers and older, and they know what the taste of tomatoes really can be. So I think we just hit a bit of a chord in the early days when we, when we were producing tomatoes with a lot of taste and um, the locals warmed to us. And we did develop that brand and with the catchy name, and we've got a bit of a catchy tune too for our, um, uh, for our ads, for our um, advertising, it's stuck. So how does the tune go? You want me to sing it? Yes, please. Go. Goes, Ricardo's, Ricardo's, tomatoes are so green. Oh, ask him if they'll sell you a couple of slaps. Oh, right. Because yeah. he'd buy them by the, by the um, shipping container. Yeah. Yeah. 
While tomatoes are the farm's main business, it's been its strawberry sideline that's been instrumental in getting people in through the farm gate. When we first started it was just tomatoes and uh, yep we've got the best flavour but uh, it's still hard to get someone to come out just for a bag of tomatoes. Um, the, the die hard loyalists will but uh, you still the tourists won't so uh, basically we had to find a way to get people to come out. Um, picking strawberries was one of the ways that we decided to get people out. They are going well. Just, just coming along nicely at this time of year. It's well timed for the um, school holidays coming up in the winter. At this farm, strawberries are also grown hydroponically. They're in easy reach for both young and old. Good for all ages and sizes. Doesn't matter whether you're a little kid. You can pick the top ones, pick the bottom ones. Doesn't matter. And best thing too, undercover. They're the big attractant, basically. Extremely important both in terms of attracting the customers through the gate, uh, but financially too, from a farming's perspective, it's a very important part of our, uh, our cash flow. And, uh, uh, after the tomatoes, probably the second most important profit centre, by all means. So they make you real money? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's um, uh, come in, pick a bucket of strawberries, cash them in, and um, hopefully do a little bit more shopping around the, around the farm. Flavorinos? Yes. Local produce is a strong drawcard at farmers' markets held across the region. Oh, you've got the basket oh, sauce. Yeah. yeah. What do you think of it? Very nice. We brought some of this a couple of weeks ago and uh, people over for dinner, they really enjoyed it. Yeah. So we're here buying some more. Ricardo's success has now spawned another local business. No tomato or strawberry goes to waste. We can take that surplus or second grade stock and turn it into a first class product. The other chef makes the jam and other products for Ricardo's farm store. We started one weekend five kilos of fruit, 50 jars. Ricardo sold that in one weekend, and now it's gone to a point where we've got a large factory. Our, po our pots aren't 10 litre pots anymore, they're 320 litre pots. We've got four full-time staff. We're a small family business, and we're proud of that. And those 50 jars that weekend have basically gone to, this year, will uh, approximately 30,000 jars of that strawberry jam for Ricardo's. In Port Macquarie, the push to buy local has strong support, not just from customers, but the local council. You've got to hand it to the guys out of the Ricardos. They had a vision from the word go and they marketed their product exactly how they wanted to. The local community has just embraced it and we get many crates a day of the of, of Ricardos product and most days we sell out before the day's over. Mike Casato is both a businessman and a councillor. He says support for local growers and businesses is vital. I've been in the market game for over 25 years and the guys in the market system have not seen it harder in the fruit industry at the moment. It's Australia-wide, it's fruit and vegetables and all other fresh product. So where we can support our local um, pr producers, I'd like to see a lot, a, lot, a lot of people locally supporting the local business as well. For Anthony Sark, he's confident pursuing and pushing a very local product is the only way to go. Relying on that central market in Sydney was just, just wasn't on, we knew that. So if you had, what would have happened? Um, look, I shudder to think, I don't think we would be where we are today. Um, the variables are just too great. <laughs> One happy strawberry eater. <laughs>